We can factor x squared plus 36 uh, using complex numbers but not using real numbers. So what would you write as your solution to this problem? What would you write if I gave you that problem? Let, let, me, let me rephrase that. What would you write when I give you this problem on a test? When, not if. What would you write as your answer? Now, we're not solving an equation here. We are, we're factoring, right? So remember what we're doing. The skill is factoring. X minus 6i. Well, you could write it as x minus 6i times x plus 6i, and I would certainly give you credit for that. But if we're, if, we're, if we're factoring over the real numbers, then I would want you to either write that it is prime, or you could write it's not factorable. But please don't write it as x plus 6 times x minus 6 because x plus 6 times x minus 6 is x squared minus 36, and this is not what we started with. Okay? Now, one other little thing that I want you to know about this, and this is, this is a calculus skill, okay? This is something that's extremely useful uh, when you take calculus, okay? Now, we're going to move on to cubes next, but I, I do want to show you this extra thing here. And this is an important fact, right? Y'all ready to write this down? Because this is an important fact. Every difference is a difference of squares. So what we just looked at with that x squared plus 36 is that we can write that as x squared minus negative 36 and use the two square roots of negative 36 to write it as a factored pair of conjugates. All right? Every difference is a difference of squares. And here's what I mean by that. x squared minus 5, for example, is a difference of squares. Right? Can't we take the square root of 5? We don't know exactly what it is, but, we, but 5 has a square root. So I've got a difference. I've got a square here, and I can take the square root of 5. So I could always write this as x plus the square root of 5 times x minus the square root of 5. Yes, you can, right? x plus the square root of 5 times x minus the square root of 5. Does everybody agree with that? Right? That's, that's a conjugate pair, so it's going to result in uh, the product of x times x minus the product of the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. x times x is x squared. x square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is, is 5. Every difference is a difference of squares. So I could take this even a little bit further and have a look at uh, something like this. Let's just do x minus 2. Right? x minus 2? Can we handle x minus 2? Is it a difference of squares? No. Not in a great sense, but in this sense, that we can see every difference as a difference of squares, I can take the square root of x plus the square root of 2 times the square root of x minus the square root of 2, and I could write that as a difference of two squares. I could write it as a product of conjugates. All right? Y'all with me? You okay with this? Now, here's where this is going to be helpful to us. Yeah, no, I don't think I want to show you that in calculus. I don't want to show you that yet. We'll look at it at some point. But this skill of being able to take like x minus 2 and break it up into um, square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x minus 2 is going to help you uh, when you're simplifying limits in, in calculus.
right? So you, this is a, a useful skill. But this fact, and this is probably new, right? Have y'all, has anybody ever shown you this before? Probably not been stretched to this place before. But every difference is a difference of squares um, is, is, is true. So we can factor really anything using this conjugate property of uh, products. All right, so let's move on. Move on to cubes. Now, if we're factoring two terms, the first thing we look for is a GCF. The second thing we look for is a difference of squares. If it's neither of those two things, then we can start looking for cubes, right? Now, notice this doesn't say difference of cubes. It doesn't say sum of cubes. All we need is two cubes. If you have two cubes, then you have a factorable uh, cubic expression. All right, so... Uh, for, so first, check for GCF and difference of squares, and then we want to look for cubes. What are the cubes? You need to know your cubes, right? One cubed is 1. 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 27. 4 cubed is 64. 5 cubed is 125. 6 cubed is, six cubed is 216. 7 cubed is 343. That's probably about, I wouldn't take you any higher than that if we're working with cubes, but you should know your cubes up through 7 and 10 cubed is 1,000. So if you see these numbers, guys, in a mathematical expression, you need to recognize 216 is 6 cubed. You, you, you just do. As you, as you grow more and more mathematically literate, you need to see cubes. You need to see squares, and it'll help you through processes like this, okay? So how do you know if a variable or an exponent is a cube? The exponent should be divisible by 3. Squares are even, which means they're divisible by 2. Cubes are multiples or factors, or it's not, multi not factors, multiples of 3. So uh, if they're divisible by 3, then it's a cube. So is x cubed plus 8 a cube? It is, right, because it's x cubed and 8 is the cube of 2. Does anybody remember the process of factoring cubes? 10 peso points, anybody that can tell me the process here? Not trial and error. There's a, there's a pattern to this one. These are really easy if you know the pattern, but ne next to impossible if you don't. Cubes will always factor as, and this is the starting point, cubes will always factor into a binomial times a trinomial. So that's the starting point. That's the, that's the grid that we've got to fill in. So we're going to have a binomial and a trinomial. So we've got five blanks to fill in and one, two, three signs, right? Now, if you were forced to guess... And that's exactly what you are being done. You're being forced to guess, not violently, but forced to guess what two things would go in that parenthesis, the first parenthesis, the binomial. What do you think is going there? X and 2. Yes, right? Uh, it's the cube root of the first of those two things. So the fill in the blanks, you take the cube root of the two terms. So the first blank would be X, and the second blank would be Two, and you certainly wouldn't need to rewrite that. I'm just kind of... So that's two things. Does everybody know where those two things came from? The cube root of x cubed is x, and the cube root of 8 is 2. Does anybody remember what goes in the next three blanks? x squared. Somebody said x squared. Well, that just makes sense, right? Because I know I've got to have an x cubed, right? So x squared goes in the next blank. Fill in the next three blanks, you square the first term. So x squared is x squared. Then you multiply the two things together. x times 2 is 2x. And then you square the last to get the last. All right, so you see where those three things came from. The first thing is you take this and you square it. You multiply them together and put that here. And then you square this to get that. So the first, the binomial is the cube roots, and then you square, multiply, square. Now the only thing we have to do is fill in what? 
The signs, right? Does anybody remember the signs? Did you say it, Bailey? Y'all have done this. You did this in Algebra 2. Maybe skimmed through it. Yes, no, maybe, kind of, sort of. No? Didn't? Okay, that's all right. X, the signs are the same signs, opposite sign, and positive. Sop. A nerdy mathematical greeting. Sop. Okay. Um, same sign means that the first sign in this case is going to be positive. Same as the one that was given to us, right? So the same sign, and then the next one is going to be the opposite of that. And the last term is always positive. So same sign, opposite sign, and then positive. Sop. So the binomial is the cube roots, then we square, multiply, square, the signs are same, opposite, positive. That's a process that you have to remember. Why are we learning this skill? Why are we learning any skills in algebra? What is algebra? So you can pass the class, very good. We're learning a skill that is necessary to solve equations, right? So what I'm learning here is a skill that is necessary to solve an equation like, here we go, x cubed plus 8 equals 0. I can factor it as x plus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 4 equals 0. Then I can immediately see that either x plus 2 equals 0, which means x equals negative 2, right? And the other two solutions, because this is a cubic polynomial, we're looking for three solutions. The other two solutions come from setting x squared minus 2x plus 4 equal to 0. And that equation is going to require the quadratic formula to solve. It's going to have two imaginary solutions. Okay, so um, we can find all three solutions using this factoring skill because we can quickly see one of them. All right, now I'm going to take you one step further in this equation because we're also in trig. I'm going to show you how to take this expression if this was equal to zero. Obviously, we can see x equals negative 2 as a solution, right? And then we have to use a quadratic method to do this. But if we start with x cubed plus 8 equals 0, and we take x cubed equals negative 8, right? And then we can take the cube root of both sides. So x equals the cube root of negative 8. What's the real cube root of negative 8? Negative? 2i. Now, remember, cubes can be negative. It's OK. It's not imaginary. What's the cube root of negative 8? Negative, negative 2. All right, so we can see that sign pretty clearly, that solution pretty clearly. Clearly. Now, we cannot see the other two solutions from this method, though, can we? Right? But, wait for it, in trigonometry, I'm going to show you how to find all three cube roots of negative 8. How many square roots does every number have? Every number has two square roots, right? The principal square root and the negative square root. The two square roots of 4 are plus or minus 2. If we're asking for both square roots, there's two of them. There's three cube roots to numbers. And we're going to learn how to find all three cube roots of these numbers when we get to trigonometry. Here's a little practice before we move on. Okay, so just to walk through the process again, x cubed plus 8 is cubes. The cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of 8 is 2. We're going to square the first one. We get x squared. We're going to multiply them together and get the 2x. And we're going to square the 2 to get 4. And then the signs are same, opposite, positive, always. 
All right, so let's practice this process with x cubed minus 64. Go through your process, look for difference of squares, look for uh, GCF first, difference of squares next, and then cubes last. These don't have a GCF or difference of squares, right? Is it a cube? Are these cubes? Yes or no? What's the starting point for cubes? Because we have to know the starting point. Cubes always factor as what? You should have written this down in your note. Cubes always factor into a binomial times a trinomial. So we're going to start this off as binomial times a trinomial. I got three blanks to fill in. What's the cube root of x cubed? The cube root of 64 is 4. Then we're going to square, multiply, square. Square x, you get x squared. Multiply those two together, you get 4x. Square 4, you get 16. Signs are same. The opposite of that would be positive and then positive. Right? So that's the process. Take the cube roots, binomial to the cube roots, then square, multiply, square to get the trinomial. All right, what about x cubed plus 125? It's not a GCF, right? No difference of squares. So we'll jump straight to cubes. Cubes always factor as a binomial, binomial times a trinomial. Cube root of x cubed is x. Cube root of 125 is 5. Then we will square, multiply them together, and square it. Signs are same, so that'll be plus. Opposite of plus is minus, and then plus here. Right? And I'm going to give you one that's a little bit more difficult than that on a test, something like this, 125x to the 6 minus 27y to the 15th. This is our last example. If it's cubes, it will always, emphasis on always, factor as a binomial times a trinomial. So I'm giving myself room here. And we're going to take the cube root of each of these things. What is the cube root of... What is the cube root of 125x to the 6th? 5x squared. Remember to take cube roots, you divide the exponent by 3. The cube root of 27y to the 15th? 3y to the 5th, right? All right, now I've got to square this term. What's 5x squared squared? 25x to the fourth, right? When you're squaring something, you multiply the exponents. Now I'm going to multiply these two things together. What's 5x squared times 3y to the fifth? 15x squared y to the fifth. And then I'm going to square this term and put it there. What's 3y to the 5th squared? 9y to the 10th. I already put a plus sign there. Signs are same sign, opposite sign, which would make that plus, and this one is always positive. Okay, so it's really not a difficult task if you know the process, but an impossible task if you don't know the process. And we'll use this when we start solving higher order equations. Uh, we start solving cubic equations. We're going to do some that can purposely be factored, and we'll use the um, factorization and the quadratic formula to find the roots. All right? Uh, your homework is page 71, 1 through 4, 40 through 48 even, 50 through 56 even, 65, 69, 77, and 81. This homework is required, and we will have a quiz tomorrow.
uh, toward the end of class. We'll go over homework, and then we'll do a quiz on factoring binomials tomorrow. So there's only one new skill on the quiz, right? That is the cubes. You need to make sure that you cover that.